Hey, and welcome back to another Rottler Tech Tip. I'm Ryan, the Applications Engineering Manager, and today we're taking a look at the small block Chevy. Specifically, how we can clearance the bottom of these bores uh, to allow there to be more room for a lower overstroke when we go to do our final cylinder honing. Now, on uh, blocks specifically such as the small block Chevy, uh, when you get to the bottom of the cylinder bore, when you rebore that block and you want to go and finish and do your cylinder honing, um, as with any honing operation, we want to have enough room so the stones can, can protrude sufficiently out the bottom of the bore. That ensures that we don't taper our stones, that we're able to actually use our lower overstroke and our tight spot fixes at the bottom of the cylinder bore so that we get the straightest and best finish um, on our honed cylinders. Now, to do that, we obviously can't do that with the hone, so we have to have some preceding step to clearance that bottom, right? Uh, where the, the, the bottom of the cylinder bore goes down on to the main webbing. Now, uh, one of the beautiful things of CNC machines with ball screws and servo motors is that we have control and very precise control and we're able to move the machine and tell it to move a programmed amount while doing other operations such as boring. Uh, what we have equipped on any of our Rottler boring machines that have CNC functionality from the F10XS uh, up through the 69, 79, 100 series machines is we can, from our, uh, our cylinder bore modes, we have the ability to do what's called an operation uh, X offset for hone clearance. And what that does is, is the, when we check that box, the machine will bore the cylinder, and then when it gets to the defined bottom, where we say the bottom of the bore is, uh, what it's gonna do is it can actually shift the machine's axis over either to the left or the right, depending on which side the interference would be, and then continue to bore down uh, whatever prescribed amount we'd like to tell it. What that means is we can say, I would like the machine at the bottom of the bore to move into the wall 20 or 30 thousandths, and then proceed to move down a half inch or so. Now, by doing that, we relieve material away from the wall and below where the, the bottom of the bore is. And that's going to allow us for when we're in our honing machine to get that lower overstroke, whether it be a half or five eighths or one inch even. Uh, so what we're gonna do here is on the F10XS, uh, I'm gonna give you guys a, just a demo, a walkthrough and show you on a bore just how easy that is to set up, how efficient it is and uh, how you can save a lot of time because it, without doing this on a CNC, a lot of the times it comes down to manually grinding that. And this is something that CNC machines really kind of have a unique advantage and a unique feature that makes this work a lot easier. So let's hop right in. All right, so we have our small block Chev relay block. Uh, it, it's loaded up in our machine here. We're using our V6, V8 fixture today. And we already have a program, a general cylinder bore programming uh, done inside the control here. Now I've preset my cutter. This is set to take 20 thousandths out of the bore. And then what we're gonna do is walk through and show you just how easy it is to set up the program to offset this cutter and clearance below the bottom of the bore. So inside my control at the machine here, what I wanna do is I wanna go into, I'm in my small block Chevy file, my cylinder bore operation. And over here, I already have my locations set up as well as my vertical stops. Now, I just used the tape measure to find where the bottom of my bore is. And in this scenario, my bottom of my bore is the final point that this uh, insert will end up at the bottom of the clearance position. It's very critical. Typically when we're just doing cylinder boring, we'll go to the bottom of the bore and we might not be going as far as we need for a clearance. Uh, in this scenario, when you're doing this operation, you wanna make sure that you set the bottom of your bore here on your vertical stops to be that final position where your, your offset, your clearancing is going to be completed. So what I, what I wanna do is once I have that set up, I'm gonna go ahead and over here on the right side of my machine, I have uh, enable X offset for honing. It's under the X offset for honing options. And if I check this box, 
a series of, of items are going to show up uh, beneath this. And what I have here is the X amount. So I can tell it 20 thousandths, 30 thousandths, just need enough to clearance for my stones. And below that it says Z height. That's going to be the height where this is going to automatically shift the X axis over and begin proceeding down again. So it's going to be some value uh, above my bottom of my bore. Uh, in this scenario, again using a tape measure, I can check the location where it looks like you know I'm, I'm approximately at the bottom on the other side, and that's about 5.9 inches down, and I have zero set at the top of the fire deck here. So uh, that gives it the amount that it's going to move over as well as where it's going to do it. Now down here you've got options for the left bank and the right bank. We're doing our left bank here and uh, on this you know so cylinders two three and four over here on the left bank are going to need to have a right offset. The, the, the obstruction is on the right of the bottom of the bore. So what I can do is on the drop down here I have options for no offset, left offset, right offset. So on this left bank I'm going to want to do this as a right offset and typically, well, the last thing I'll do here is there's an option for change speeds. And because you're doing what's called an interrupted cut, <clears throat> it's cutting air for most of the bore and then it's hitting on the other side, it's a good idea to usually slow this down a little bit. Again, we're not looking usually for a specific finish, we just want to remove material. So in here, I can type in what I'd like to run. We'll run at 800 RPM and a 5,000 speed rate for our clearancing operation. Uh, if everything looks good in here, that's all you have to do to set up this operation. Now, one thing to keep in mind, uh, I'm using our production cutter head here today, and it's always a good idea uh, with this operation, specifically because you have to go so far down, and there can be obstructions such as main webbing on blocks, is, is at least on you know one or two of the bores, go ahead and move the bar to it, take the tool out, and jog down to what is going to be your final position. What will happen is uh, sometimes the webbing is going to interfere with the bottom of your, cut, of, of your cutter head. If that's the case, uh, like on this production cutter head, uh, you would want to look into the option which is our blind hole cutter head. They have the same diameter of cutting range, but what they do is uh, on this machine we have centering fingers and with the production style cutter heads, they're below the insert cartridge itself. On a blind hole, the centering fingers become, they're moved above the cartridge or the cartridges move below them. And that allows you to get to a true blind hole bottom uh, with your insert or your tool. Uh, the drawbacks, pros and cons to everything, the drawbacks of a blind hole cutter head is with the centering fingers below your, um, uh, uh, or with your cartridge below your centering fingers, you have to center, let the machine center, and then put the, the tool holder in. That's why we do have a blind hole mode. So regardless, it's just a good idea to check. You want to be safe. So I've already checked this. I know it works. Now, I've got everything set here. So I can put the insert into the boring bar. And what we're going to do is we'll come over just like running before any other operation. Now, our first hole has no interference. So, um, you know, in a production setting here, we could run this and, and this one, you know, it probably wouldn't hurt anything to do it, uh, but it'd be a waste of time. So we're going to run this on just hole two, three, and four today. Uh, if I wanted to go run hole one separately and not do the offset, I can just simply come back here and turn off. My, my offset honing, that's going to turn that, that operation off and it'll just bore to the bottom of the hole. But we'll run this on two, three, and four. If I press bore left,
right, so we'll move this out of the way. Now what we've got here is, is right when this gets to the bottom of the bore now, on, on cylinders two, three, and, and four here, you can see there's a shift and there's about five eighths uh, to three quarters of an inch in here that has been relieved on that side. We'll go ahead and show these on the screen with some images uh, at the end here. But that's the process for uh, clearancing blocks such as small block Chevy or any other block that may have some interference that doesn't allow you to get proper uh, lower overstroke when you get to your honing machine. Beats the heck out of trying to do that by hand. Hopefully you can see how fast and just how easy this is. If you're already boring on a Rottler CNC machine, that option is always there. Uh, and specifically something unique to this F-Series boring machine, the F10XS, having that X-axis uh, ball screw. Uh, this is the only machine of this style and footprint that has that operation. Hope you folks found this interesting. And as always, thank you so much for letting us be a part of your solutions. And if you have any questions, feel free. You can contact me. Email is great, ryan at rottlermfg.com. Thanks again, and we'll catch you next time.